Hello, this video is going to talk you through the first lab assignment. Now the goal of this assignment is just to make sure that you have a Java environment set up and can write code, compile it and run it and all that kind of thing. This isn't going to use any of the things we've talked about yet. In this class, unlike in the past, you can use whatever Java environment you want. So if you have a IDE or something else set up from 220 and 240 that you liked, you can feel free just to continue to use it. In the past, I've had students use a Linux environment, but this semester, because we don't have the normal lab access and things like that, you could just use whatever works for you is cool. So the lab today is basically making sure you have some way to run programs. If you don't already, then you'll have to install an IDE or other environment. Uh, you can choose what you want. Let me know if you have any questions or problems with that. And then there's a short little lab to test that you have everything working and can email me the code at the end of it. So let's switch over to that page and I can talk you through the short lab exercise. All right, so here's the lab page for lab one. Like I said, the goal of this lab is to make sure that you have a Java environment up and running and to sort of get your coding juices flowing again by having you write something and turn it in. So for this class, like I said, you can use whatever Java environment you want in IDE or editor or whatever you have. Probably most of you will just have something that you used in 240 and got comfy with, so you should just continue to use that. But if you need any help installing Java or setting an IDE or editor up, just let me know and I'll be happy to help you with that. So the task for this lab doesn't really have too much to do with anything we've been talking about. I just think it's kind of an interesting problem. So it's based on an old interview question that Google used to use. I don't think they use these sort of tricky questions anymore, but they used to like these tricky questions. And one of them says that there's a country where people only want to have girl children and they continue having children until they have a girl. So when a family starts having children, they start. And if their first child is a boy, they have another child. If that child's a boy, they keep going and so on and so forth until they have a girl child. If they have a girl right away, then they stop with only the one child. So the question is, if a country existed like this, and this was the method that families used to grow their families, what would the proportion of girls to boys be? Would it be 50-50? Would there be two thirds girls and one third boys? Would there be three quarters boys and one quarter girls? What would it be? What would be the breakdown? So just for fun, before you actually solve this problem, make a guess as to what the answer is and put it in the comments of your code before you write it, just because I'm curious to see uh, what people think. This is not super intuitive for most people. So we could solve this problem with statistics and reasoning and logic, or because we're programmers, we can just write a program that simulates this hypothetical country and sees what will actually happen. And this is definitely easier for me to do it this way, probably for y'all as well. So what you'll do is you'll write a short program to find the answer by simulating a million families having children using this method. So on these lab pages, there's the task section, which sort of explains what's going to happen. And then the details section down here is going to give you sort of more detailed tips as to how to go about writing a program to solve this. So what I would do is create a class called family that contains two private variables, one for the number of girls and one for the number of boys. So each family knows how many children of each sex that it has. Then in the constructor, set them both to zero, of course, because the families are gonna start with no kids. Next, you can make getter methods to return the number of girls and the number of boys. One method for each, of course. Then the crux of this is gonna be a method called step, which will simulate one step of the simulation of this family having children. So when you call step, what it's going to do is it's going to check if the family already has a girl or not. If it does, then it's gonna return right away. If the family does not have a girl, then they have a child and you should use a random number generator to decide if they have a girl or a boy, which of course should be 50-50. So if they have a boy, then you increment the number of boys. And if they have a girl, then you increment the number of girls. Then you should return a Boolean to indicate whether this family is done or not. So if they have a girl, you can return true, they're done. And if they have a boy, you should return false, they're not done. Then in the main method, 
create and initialize an array of 1 million family objects. So you're making a class called family, and then you're going to make an array of 1 million families. Loop through each family and call the step method repeatedly until every family is done. So you'll basically have two loops, one that goes through for each family, and then one that calls the step method on that family until it's finished. Then at the end, print the number of girls, the number of boys, and then the percentage of the population, which is girls. And you'll see what it is. Is it a quarter, a third, two thirds, a half, three quarters, what? So when you're done, please email me your program. This is how you're gonna turn in all of your lab and programming assignments. I don't like uh, to get submissions on Canvas or anything like that. Email me just the Java file at ifinlay at umw.edu. Also, please attach the Java files as an attachment. Don't just like paste the code into your email body. That makes it less convenient for me to deal with. And I don't need your .class file, so don't bother to send those either. All right, I think that should be all for that lab. If you have any questions about these things, either for this lab or any of the other ones, please just let me know as you're going through these. I don't want people to be stuck uh, forever, you know, spending days on something which hopefully shouldn't take that long. So if you're stuck on this, please let me know. All right, thanks.